Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Illuminati Podcast, episode 244. As always, I am one of your hosts, Mike Martin, today joined by my own mom and dad, Jesse and Alex. Wow. Hello. I am your parent. Thank you. We, wow, together got we our genitals combined, and then that guy, that dude came out. It's like kind of like Captain Planet. Mm-hmm. That's, that's such a... It's such a weird. Well, it's because you said our genitals combined. So, like, I just heard with our powers combined. No, like, no, it's absolutely true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With your like, powers there was, combined, there was earth, fire, wind, <laughs> water, heart, dick, <laughs> vagina. Yeah. I believe is I believe is what they were. I think yeah. that's right. Yeah, actually. Although dick vagina, I couldn't say penis. What's that? You know what? Whatever. Dick vagina. It's fun. Dick, half, but half doctor, half swinger. <laughs> yeah, dick vagina sounds like a a, a writer for like. Dick vagina. Daytime soap opera. <laughs> Dick vagina. Dick vagina. Uh, DDS. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, everybody. Richard vagina. DDS. <laughs> please, yeah, please, please call me Richard vagina, please. Richard vagina is like, uh, just, he doesn't call too much attention to it. He says, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was a kid once. Yeah. And kid, kid kids can it's, be so mean. It's very funny. It's true. <laughs> kids are incre- incredibly cruel. Oh, <laughs> is that right? Ha ha ha. This is character. Well, I'm trying to, he's, he's quickly becoming like a, f- a physical manifestation of my mind. I can see him very well. I'm just a normal guy. My name's Richard Vagina. I'm a dentist. <laughs> <laughs> a little tall, clean shaven, yeah. you know, that short brown hair, very non- He's got like, perfectly round glasses. <laughs> perfectly round teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's a cryptid. Oh, uh, welcome back <laughs> to the damn show. Uh, we've got a fun show for you, but not as fun as the things you can get if you give us some money. What? Whoa, what? It's true. It's a great show. That Not is... as great as this other stuff you can do. So ignore this show. It's trash. <laughs> what my co-host is trying to tell you about is a fine website called patreon.com slash Chiluminati pod. We can go. And you can give us some of your money. You know, we're not asking everybody to do this, but if you've got some extra money laying around and you want to say, you know what? I'd like to set, I'd like to send that Chiluminati's way to ensure that it remains free for all time for all people. You know, that's cool to me. If you do that. And if you do do it, do do it. If you <laughs> poop it out, if you poop it out, here's what I can promise you. I promise you that there's ad free episodes waiting for you in there. I promise you that every time we put out an episode like this, we do a mini sode afterwards, which is like another big chunk of content that you probably get maybe a year before anybody else does. You can also get access to monthly art from Studio Melectro, which just looks cooler and more sick than most art out there and uh we also have a new podcast called rotten popcorn brand new pod uh that is uh us watching movies there's a whole archive of episodes that haven't come out yet for you to watch there and more and more we have to do a rotten popcorn soon we got one coming soon i promise uh soon to you yes i'm sorry i've been having so many extenuating circumstances lately that i just haven't been free but i will i got you guys you guys are going to be on my back uh as the great turtle through uh space and time you know like we're floating you guys are all floating i'm like a turtle i got you guys i i've got your back which is my back is what i'm saying we're on your back we're back riding you're, alex yeah you're on my back mm, i'm all right <laughs> you're welcome on my back anytime mm, no, if you okay. want to climb right on my back you're welcome there that's what I'm just. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't. I'm just trying to connect with the fan base. You know what I mean? Fair enough. That's fair my enough. vibe. Right. Right. Doing your job. And speaking of connecting with the fan base, what do you got for us today, Mathis? Absolutely. Yeah. It's been a while uh, since we've done one of these. I, I, every time we bring it up, it's always been like, oh wow, it's been five months, six months. It's time for another listener stories episode, gentlemen. And don't worry, we are avoiding any dreams since we just went through a lot of dreams uh, recently. But this is how fun. How fun are the dreams, by the way? There's a lot of scary. Some people dream some scary shit. I want you to know, I did not ask Pat to keep a dream diary. I just mentioned that I wanted to have him on the dreams episode. And then he was like, I'm going to keep a dream diary for the next three months. That was so cool, though. Like, yeah. I love that, that, that he did that. I yeah. genuinely thought you gave him homework. I did. I literally did not ask him. He was just like, I'm doing that. He's a great guest. I love Pat. He's, yeah. he's uh, really funny. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, we've got some reader stories here. I'm gonna, I'll start us off. Uh, there's a couple of uh, short little ones at the very beginning. I forgot to put the title at the very uh, top, but that's because it comes from our Discord. Uh, this is from somebody named Rowdy, and they say uh, they got a couple quick stories. And the first one takes place in a suburb of Denver. When they were 18 or 19, a buddy and him, uh, I'll just say this, a buddy and I were on our way to meet up with our third amigo, and we were going to go to a movie. Sounds like us, except I wouldn't be going to the movie. I don't see movies. Amigo was... <laughs> Amigo was meeting us at the top of a parking garage in my apartments to get baked before we went into a late night showing of Inglorious Bastards. Oh, I so have not seen mean- that movie, but I've heard it's really good. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. Uh, just There's nothing as the- quite like being very high and watching the first 20 minutes of that film. I'm sure you'd, you're not paranoid at all after Dude. that uh, great introduction. <laughs> Dude, I went and saw uh, Planet of the Apes on, on Edibles. That was, a, that was a trip. Yo, did you think that the... They blew it up. Those those maniacs, damn them, damn them all to hell. <laughs> I saw the I saw the one I saw the one with Andy Circus and oh uh, never mind the boy right, never Harry mind Potter. I thought you meant like <laughs> the OG one I was like yeah okay I was like I'll never look at a monkey the same again dude <laughs> I don't trust those apes are you excited now, for dude. the new one coming dude look I love those movies when I watch them this is I know this is I know this is. <laughs> Just a side quest to the story. Listen, today's episode is a light. It's like call it like a nice appetizer because starting next week, it's you're in for four weeks of a lot. So don't worry. Like you, you guys know. have no idea. There's multiple people that have on this project, including myself. It's an Alex driven. This is Alex driven series coming up. But we have Deanna and myself also working on it. It's like this. I needed help with this one. This one's a big one. Yeah, I'm very excited for it. But anyway, continue. Yeah. Anyway, I watched the first three Planet of the Apes and I thought they were great, <laughs> but I just forgot about them. And then the other day I saw the trailer for the fourth one and I was like, you know what? I think it's time to watch the apes. Anyway. We're high. We're watching Inglorious Bastards in the apartment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, just as the turn came into sight, the sky lit up like it was daytime. For five or six of solid seconds, we could see the clouds in the sky. The mountains lit up like it was morning sunshine. And then just like that, it was night again, and it was over. We both, we both saw it, and we, when we got up to our buddy, he had been sitting on the hood of his car, rolling a joint, waiting for us, and he didn't see a thing. We smoked, forgot about all of it, and drove to the movies, but I still think about it from time to time. I checked the news the next day, and nothing came of it, but I know it wasn't a trick of the light, because two of us saw it, and we hadn't even made it to the smoke yet. See, they weren't even high. You can't even blame them on being high. Here's the thing about being high, okay? Take it from me. If you smoke a marijuana cigarette, and day and night turns to daytime, you go to the hospital right away. You've been poisoned. (laughs) Yeah, you don't don't hit the thing, and all of a sudden, you're like in Alice in Wonderland. Like, yeah. That said, they hadn't smoked, right? Also true. So, yeah. Uh, I feel like I've seen videos of stuff like this happening, either on like TikTok, Instagram, whatever, of like the night really lighting up bright for a bit and then going dark again. This would usually happen at night when I drive past the 99 cent store because the 99 cent store is lit by fluorescent lighting. And when you drive past there at any time, if you, if you drive in the lane close to the window, you, it might as well be daytime. Also, could have <laughs> been one of those giant, like, there's a lot of those industrial level lights or flashlights yeah, that's bright. true in a place Those like denver crazy powerful there's one in the middle of the desert could have been a meteor that's also could've true been, yeah it could have been a meteor space debris uh breaking up in, in the sky yeah, uh, that's also been, possible uh, like a power plant situation or like a oil refinery on the way you're dead is, actually maybe one. you died that night and now we are your afterlife hallucination maybe welcome you're- to hell <laughs> You think hell is just filled with a bunch of middle-aged white podcasters? Uh, uh, I mean, obviously, yes, but I don't want us to, like, generalize. You know, that's... Mm. Uh, fair enough, fair enough. All yeah. right, you got one more story for us. Uh, and this one co- is when he's on the good old Queen Mary story, which we have to, we have to go to the Queen Mary boat Dude, one day. Yes, we do. Here's the thing. Queen Mary is great because, on the one hand, it's supposed to be a luxury hotel. On the other hand, it's a shithole. Yeah. So, like... It's spo- it's scary. Like it's it feels like you're in like a last like a you know what it is? What's the what's the game? Uh it feels like you're on a left for dead map. That's what the Queen Mary feels like. Okay. Mm. Yeah. All right. I just uh, want to say uh I the most recent last trip I had to the Queen Mary was for an event. Uh I got food poisoning and was sick for two days. So was I there? No, you no. Are you sure it was food I don't poisoning think so. and you just don't have like an after haunting sickness? No, dude, I was like <laughs> 
I was shaking so violently Ooh. and so chilled that I went to the shower to, and I turned it full heat to just like oh, feel I something. At, I was at a wedding. I couldn't. I was at That's a wedding awful. that you were at not that long ago at the Queen Mary. That's all I'm saying. And if, if it's the one that I think it was, I know I know whose wedding it was. <laughs> I got so sick. I was gone, y'all. It was it was rough. It was rough. Well, damn. Maybe I don't want to go to the Queen Mary. Well, we'll find out. Also, speaking of the Queen Mary, did we talk about? Do you know the Do you know the show Most Haunted with Yvette Fielding? We've talked about that on here. I'm sure. Yeah, maybe. It's like the British Ghost Adventures from like a little bit before Ghost Adventures. Okay. And uh, it's another one that like had a hoax or two like revealed that they like did some faking, but like there's one episode Surprise. that's set in America where they go to the Queen Mary and it's like not available. All the other ones mm. are available. Like it's a two parter even. And, and one part is available and the other part is like not available. And it's like the one piece, anyone that I talk to about the show, that's the, one the episode. Piece. It's like the One Piece I, adaptation on Netflix. No, anybody that I talk to about the Most Haunted show always nerds out with me about that specific Queen Mary episode, and it's like not on there. It's like it's like one of the few episodes that's not on like mm. Amazon or whatever it's on. Mm. I don't know why. Weird. All right, we'll continue the Queen Mary story real quick. Is uh, another <clears throat> he drove out to California for a Halloween music festival with a few friends, and the trip <laughs> itself was made for a mid two thousand stoner disaster comedy. <laughs> we ended up in Long Beach two days before the festival and went to the Queen Mary for some haunted shenanigans with some friends beforehand. He, this dude sounds like fucking fun to hang out with. I, I don't know. This dude sounds yeah, like if, if, if my friend group was from Denver. <laughs> uh, we had a mostly normal night toward the ship and felt real spooky till we all passed out for the night. It got weird in the middle of the night when I woke up to a blood curdling scream from the next room. It was our group of friends just in a connected room with a different bed girl we were with was screaming because her boyfriend had ended up in his underwear crawled into the hull of the ship at the what? top of the closet there was no ceiling so if you crawled over the wall you could get in between part of the ship walls he had what? crawled like 20 feet up the wall inside this thing dead asleep and woke up and started yelling for his girlfriend he claimed something had control of him and he knew what was happening but couldn't stop it until he finally made a sound Seems like a crazy what? sleepwalking story overall, but they claimed he wasn't a sleepwalker. He didn't do any drugs and had no history of weird behavior as far as we knew. So him feeling something was in control and it being on a haunted ship always stuck with me. Jesus. Interesting. That's weird. Just like weirdly climbing into the fucking, you don't think, do you, my question is, did, were they pranksters? Is this something they did to like scare you? I would not. Here's the thing. I would not do that. Like I would not climb into the hull of a ship either. If I was doing a prank, this would not be the way to do it. My, my, uh, my cousin used to be a like docent at, uh, the Iowa, which is like another queen Mary esque ship nearby there in San Pedro, which is just across from long beach, but it's like a military one. It's like a, you know, like it's the USS Iowa. It's got like guns on the top, stuff like that. Big gray ship. And, uh, it's huge. And people used to get lost in there just by like making a wrong turn and going off into the bowels of the ship and not knowing where they oh, are. Oh, Jesus. So going mm. into the walls of a ship, and you don't know how f far down, because the Queen Mary, I think, has like yeah, an inner huge. and outer hole, right? So like you don't know where you're going to be. That's that. I would not do that for any amount of money. But the idea of being asleep and climbing 20 feet up a wall seems crazy to me. Queen Mary, though, scary. Can, can confirm. Been on it a bunch of times, and it is. It got wrong. me, so... It's wrong, <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much to today's sponsor, Ghostbed. If you don't know what Ghostbed or who Ghostbed is, well, Ghostbed provides high-quality and super comfortable award-winning mattresses crafted in the United States and Canada. Did you know that 60% of U.S. adults report being too hot when they're trying to sleep? I'm one of them, by the way. God, I sweat. I sweat so much. And that's why they've all designed their products with cooling features. So you stay comfortable and asleep all night. So you can pair any of their mattresses with Ghostbed's award-winning adjustable base and get the ultimate sleep experience. I'm just going to, listen, they've got a bunch of things you want me to say to you, and I will say them because they're it's true. Like they have 60,000 five-star reviews. Uh, they have a patented cooling tech exclusive to their Ghostbed mattresses for comfort and support that literally nobody else has. But I just want to say I have the Ghostbed pillow. And I thought genuinely, I'm like, all right, yeah, it'll be cool. I'll get a pillow. It'll be fun. And maybe, you know, it'll be great. It'll be a fun little like uh, you know, partnership with these guys. And you know, maybe it'll just be something I enjoy, but doesn't really change all that much. My sleeping life changed. I'm not kidding you. That pillow 
literally somehow like I, I'm surprised there's not little fans on each side that's like blowing out heat and cooling it actively because that sucker like never gets hot. When my other pillows, I used to have to flip them over and over and over. I don't have to do that with this one. It's such a game changer, bro. It's so good. They even have 101 night at home sleep trials on all their mattresses and pillows too, with 20 plus year warranties and two times the industry standard. I'm telling you, just freaking give it a shot. It's super, super worth it. So when you purchase a ghost bed mattress, your comfort is guaranteed. With their 101 night sleep trial, like I said, you can try it out risk-free and experience the difference for yourself. Plus, they offer free shipping and most items ship within 24 hours. Visit ghostbed.com slash chill to save 50% off site-wide. It's that easy. Ghostbed.com, it's that easy. Ghostbed.com slash chill for 50% off site-wide. Thank you again to Ghostbed for sponsoring today's episode. Alex, I'm going to hand this next one to you. This is our one and only sleep paralysis story because we had talked about some sleep paralysis stuff and uh, we had asked some questions about people's experience with them. So why don't you take it away? Oh, yes. This is in in relation to like what we just talked about with Pat, right? A little bit. Yeah. yeah. It's what brought it up. Yeah. So this is called My Personal Experience with Sleep Paralysis by Elias Was Here. The topic of sleep paralysis has been brought up a few times on the pod and with the most recent episode, episode 243, I decided I would share my own experiences with it. Apologies for the ludicrously long post, but I decided to use as much detail as I could remember. Lucky for you, I'm a very fast reader. I've had somewhere around half a dozen instances of sleep paralysis over a period of several years. For me personally, it seems to occur when I am stressed or anxious about something. All but one instance of the sleep paralysis occurred while I was a PhD student and under extreme stress almost constantly. I know what that's like. (laughs) I haven't had an experience since I graduated, which is nice. Although I have had sleep paralysis multiple times, I've only had three unique scenarios, two of which have happened in distinct locations leading to different experiences, and the other having happened a few times, all taking place in my grad school apartment. The apartment scenario is similar to other sleep paralysis accounts that I've seen on the internet. My studio apartment consisted of one room connected to an open kitchen and a long hallway, at the end of which were doors on either side, one leading to the bathroom and the other leading to the communal apartment stairwell. Each instance of sleep paralysis that occurred here consisted of me laying with my head resting on my pillow in such a way that I had a good view down the hallway. Whereas other people describe having a sleep paralysis demon, I had a sleep paralysis intruder. Mm. On multiple occasions, I found myself frozen in my bed as I watched an unknown dark figure open the door to my apartment and enter the hallway. When they looked at me, I could see the white of their eyes. Most often during these scenarios, the intruder would walk toward me at an excruciatingly slow pace, but on one occasion, they first walked into the bathroom for a short while before making their snail-paced journey down the hall to me. I'm not sure how long any given sleep paralysis episode lasted, but they always felt as if they lasted for minutes slash tens of minutes. Regardless of the perceived length, the intruder never reached me or even the end of the hallway before I would regain control of my body. The first time this occurred, I was so freaked out that I couldn't fall asleep even after checking to make sure my door was locked, which it was. By the third or fourth time, although terrified in the moment, I would recover soon afterwards and fall asleep without much trouble. I don't know if that's what's worse, that or watching somebody just slowly make their way to you with an inability to do anything about it. That is like, for me, that's the That's torturous. There's some movie where that's about like being drugged on the table at a doctor's office where they're like overhearing some like shady shit happening. I forget what that's called. That movie fucked me up. That was scary. Oh, God. Uh, The second time I ever had sleep paralysis was early in my grad student career while working on homework, either classical mechanics or electricity and magnetism, not sure which, with some of my colleagues. Our offices were connected to a smaller conference room with a whiteboard, central table, and a very old and very dusty couch. Being a lifelong slacker, while my friends worked diligently on our homework, I started to fall asleep on the couch. At some point, I found out my eyes were open and I could see and hear them working on the homework but I couldn't talk or move. Even more worrying, I felt as though I was suffocating, unable to take breaths deep enough to provide ample oxygen. After some time, I I regained control of my body. My friends didn't notice anything out of place, and I had apparently only been asleep for a few minutes. Not sure how much of the time was spent actually sleeping or hallucinating. And finally, the first time I ever encountered sleep paralysis was on a flight from England to Greece while studying abroad during undergrad. My then girlfriend, now fiance, and I studied abroad in Ireland during our spring semester of our third year. Let me just say, congratulations. (laughs) Courses at University College Cork give some number of weeks off, can't remember how many, before finals to study. 
So, like good students, we decided to use that time to do some traveling. We decided to visit London for a few days before going to Athens for a night, and then Santorini, one of the Greek islands, for a week. My GF is the type that likes to leave so that we'll arrive at the airport two hours early just in case anything goes wrong, which is good because plenty of things went wrong. The train we were taking was supposed to go straight to the airport but got delayed a couple stations early. After waiting for about 40 minutes, if I remember correctly, we were told that the train would be going no further as the train ahead of us had hit someone crossing the train tracks. We were told that bus service would be coming to take us passengers to the airport free of charge. By the time we got on the shuttle and made the trip to the airport, we were short on time and running through the airport trying to get to our flight before the gate closed. Airport security had never felt so slow. We got the gates right before they were supposed to close, only to find the flight was delayed for some unknown reason. A lot of unnecessary stress had been building up to this point, but it's not over yet. It's important, it's important to note here that I am terrified of flying. I hate everything about it. I've flown safely multiple times. I'm well read on the statistics of how safe flights are, but it doesn't matter. I, I am as afraid of flying as one can be while still being able to willingly board a plane. Vibes. I, was, I used to be a lot more afraid of flying myself, but I, it eventually just got experienced out of me, exposure therapy out of me. I'm still afraid of flying, actually. Like I've been doing it for 10 years now, and it's still part of me that's like, I, I hate it. I know Jesse sleeps like fucking a rock on planes. Jesse's gone before we take off. He's yeah, like, it's, it's like insane. he's like that kid who just on Christmas Eve he just goes to sleep at like six p.m. and he's already at Christmas. And you're the like, faster Dude. I go to sleep, the sooner I'll wake up and we're already there. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, <laughs> time, I get it. time I get travel. It. I get it. I wish I could just t- go to sleep anytime I wanted. After a non inconsequential amount of time, we were allowed to board the plane. After everyone was loaded, we were told there would be additional delays within, with the reason given by the flight attendant verbatim, difficulties due to airstrikes in France. Now, any reasonable level-headed individual will hear strikes in France and recognize that he was referring to airport employees, air traffic controllers specifically being on strike. My uh, already paranoid ass immediately pictured France at war shooting down any foreign planes in their airspace. I recognize how absolutely insane it sounds, but I was sleep deprived and already freaked out. I couldn't even look it up on my phone because roaming data charges would have destroyed me financially. In a panic, I told my GF that we needed to get off the plane, to which she correctly told me to calm down and that I was making a scene. Eventually, she got me to realize how dumb I was being, and I relaxed and prepared myself for the flight. Sometime later, we took off, and I tried my best to fall asleep and fast forward through as much of the flight as I could. I awoke to a full-on hallucination of the plane crashing. Oh, God. I could feel the plane shaking violently. I could see smoke and debris flying past the window. I could hear the flight attendant over the speaker telling it to prepare for a crash landing. It lasted no more than a minute, but I was frozen solid, able only to move my eyes and observe terrifying scene around me. In that instance, I wanted to do nothing more than look at my girlfriend and tell her that we should have gotten off the fucking plane. (laughs) And then I shook out of it, accidentally bumping into the passenger sat next to me that wasn't my GF. My GF asked what was up, and I told her what I had experienced. She was a little upset that I was more concerned with saying I told you so than telling her I love you, which was reasonable. That's really funny, by the way. That's pretty funny. That is, yeah, that's hilarious. The plane's crashing and you're just like, I told you this was going to happen. Yeah. In reality, the flight was incredibly smooth, barely any turbulence, and we made it to Greece without any more hiccups. I also want to say that's a very short flight. It's like not a very far flight to Greece from England. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been years since I've experienced sleep paralysis, and although it is terrifying in the moment, I find it incredibly interesting in retrospect. If you made it this far, then I apologize for the length, which you've already done. Don't worry. It wasn't that long. But thank you for reading. If any of the guys read this, you're more than welcome to bring up anything in this post. I thought, I mean, that's, that's, I felt like was a great example of like the different ways fucking sleep paralysis can really fuck you up. There's like hallucinations of a plane crashing, dude. I don't think I'd wake up and be like kind of quiet. I feel like I'd wake up out of it screaming and scaring every passenger on that plane. I genuinely was worried that was going to happen. I was like, I feel so bad for this dude. Yeah. Like I just, please don't. I was ready to be like, please don't scream on this plane. Please. Yeah, no, that's what I, I feel like that's what I would have done. Have either of you ever, I don't feel like we've ever asked that, but have you ever experienced anything similar to like sleep paralysis or hallucinations from overexhaustion? Mm, overexhaustion specifically? I don't yeah, know. Just like hallucinations due to sleep issues, I guess is just like a better way to phrase that. I've definitely laid it, like if I go to bed and I'm tired, tired, like exhausted, tired, and that weird space between sleep and awake. Sometimes I'll just randomly hear what I think is my name. Yeah, that's that, and I'll get really weirded out and be like, uh. But then that's that's part of exploding head syndrome, I think, because I've had that happen too, where I hear Mike and it's like not anything or a loud bang or a crash, but there's nothing. Yeah, and I'll like pop up and look around and it'll be completely silent. And I'm and I'll every once in a while I'll be like, hello, 
And then nothing. I'm like, all right, well, back to sleep. <laughs> I don't really, I don't really like, usually when I'm exhausted and I have like a reaction with my body, it's like physiological, like my eyes stop working so good or my eyes start shaking a lot or. Oh yeah. 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 I just like want to go to bed, even though I didn't do anything. I used to, I used to get that all the time. Like I used to be tired because uh, I used to do these like live improv shows all the time where you got to be like high energy. Right. But like it's a two team show. So half the time you're just sitting on a bench, right? Like you're that's just- the worst too. When you know you're tired is like, if you stop moving, the moment you stop moving, your whole body's like, I'm done. Well, but it, yeah. But it's weird because you're on a bench on stage and you got to be, yeah, you got to like, be on active or else, or, or else you're not, you're going to dist- If you like start to fall asleep or you're tired, you start to distract from what's going on on stage. And uh, so you, you get off the stage having done like, you know, tw- 20 minutes of acting you know, in two hours or an hour. And you're like, Oh, cause your brain was like, <laughs> yeah. And you're already just fucking fall apart. I mean, from I've had like, I can remember as a kid, I used to have night terrors a lot. I can remember one in particular of like skeletons, seeing skeletons all in my room, was running to my mom down the hall skeleton? and just like very, very mean looking skeletons. But when I was like, I don't know, probably in my early or late and around my late twenties, I remember being so exhausted at one point I was seeing giant spiders on the ceiling. I think I've brought this up before and it was weird. Cause like they looked real, but I also knew they weren't real. And like, I walked up to them and at any time I got close, they would kind of just like melt away and like turn back into the wall. Um, Whoa. but never have I had sleep paralysis and that shit, uh, I hear you can get sleep paralysis the easiest by lying on your back. So don't sleep on your back. If you want to avoid sleep paralysis, I, I sleep paralysis I've had just not from being overly exhausted. I don't think like, do you feel like somebody was sitting on top of you? Like that crushing weight? I've seen like weird, like, like things in my room that didn't make sense. Like a, like a creature or something moving like weird, like kind of like druggy types of hallucinations that kind of like, <laughs> you, you know, in the same way, like when you use, you know, that, that feeling when you're falling asleep and you like say something that you didn't know that you like that you said, like your brain just like said yeah. some thing out loud from some thought process that you didn't even know what the fuck you're talking about. Like <laughs> that feeling comes with the sleep paralysis for me. It's never usually like you're in trouble. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. Get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. It's usually like kind of like, huh? Whoa. <laughs> Half dream. And then I'm up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, uh, thank you for that uh, story, Elias. Uh, Jesse, you can go ahead and take the next one. From false patience, underscore patience. Yeah, yeah, of course. Guys, let me share this story. Happened to my mom and me sometime around 1991, me being around 1.5 years old. She had a rather weird dream when she found herself in a church. Looking up, this church seemed to be endlessly tall, and she was standing there. Others were gathering, entering the building. Suddenly, her body started floating, then lifting off. While slowly getting higher and higher, she started to get frightened as it did not seem to end. The church's ceiling opened up, and it looked a lot like she was already entering the upper atmosphere while the walls were still around her with no end. As she was looking down, scared of falling back, she noticed the rest of the people gathering also started rising, but far behind her. This is where the weird things start to happen. She suddenly woke up in a sweat, trying to catch her breath, and noticed that I was crying. I also woke up from my sleep at the same time, and I seemed spooked. She grabbed me to calm down. In the same time, our TV turned on, and the VHS system, too. Oh, no. It started rolling without a tape inside. Oh, God. As my mom was turning her head, uh, there surprised of the noise of the TV and VHS, she noticed a floor-to-ceiling light column by next to the bed. Like, just coming from this. Okay. So, just like a column of light. Okay. Yep. It looks sharp on one side and fading out on the other side. Like, if there was a door to nothing. And some light was shining through from the other side of the door. That explains it. The light slowly faded out towards the sharp edge of the column. While she was observing this, I kept on crying and said, pee pee. So (laughs) holding me, she got out of bed and crossed the room to take me to pee. Enough. She got petrified even more when she noticed a huge white feather a few meters behind the spot 
where the light column was a few seconds ago. Out of nothing. Windows were closed. We live in a big city where there are no such birds like swans, for example. It got even more interesting when our next door neighbor, a friend to mom, told her the following. Something very strange happened last night. My son woke up in the middle of the night uh, crying and looked scared like he's seen a ghost. But there's more. Our TV turned on randomly. And even weirder, the clock uh, that didn't work for years started ticking again. You built the house on a burial ground? (laughs) Also, as proof of the whole thing, my mother kept the feather hidden in a box that I knew of because she told me uh, the story years later and shown it to me. But my parents got divorced when I was four, and so it was only my mom and I living in the flat. Also, we were the only ones who knew about the feather in the box. I remember it being there quite vividly. Then years later, I... Uh, already was living alone in the flat or in the flat. And once when I recalled the story, I wanted to show the feather to a friend. So I took the box off the shelf and opened it. But to my biggest surprise, it simply was gone and it's nowhere to be found ever since. Whoa. Yes. Hope my story leaves you just as puzzled as left me. Also would love to hear your thoughts on this. Please feel free to pick it up on the pod. Even great show, by the way, keep it up. Greetings straight from Hungary. Hey, also, uh, I'd love the little emoji because we got ourselves a little like live long and prosper, dude. Yeah, I do yeah. want to point out that the, the emojis on Google Docs are just atrocious, but I, <laughs> they I do love the, the job. Uh, yeah, they're they're there. I know what the real ones look like. You can't fool me, but good Lord, Google, get it together. The bummer that the feather was gone because I really was hoping as I was reading this the first time, I was hoping we'd have like a photo of the feather at the end, but. Oh, like the green stone sword, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly like that. Proof that it actually. I mean, I guess the is the implication that it was like a heavenly situation, like like a beam of light, and then there was a a white feather, like an angel kind of vibe. There are some. There is a type of story, and look, I'm not trying to throw shade on this story specifically because this one doesn't smack of it that hard. But sometimes when I find, you know, look, America used to be a pretty homogeneously Christian place at one point in time, not too long ago. And, uh, and, uh, you know, a lot of people who are like in the boomer age range who are in my life, uh, have paranormal stories like that, where they, they stop just short of saying that it's like biblical, like angels or Jesus or something, because I think it would kind of be sacrilege to say that an angel came to you and like did something but they always leave like a clue, like there's a, a little bit of white robes some left behind or <laughs> yeah. a, some, some leaves or a, a little white feather, like a, a, gl- a little splash of wine, of holy wine left in its wake. And they, they always, it, it Dude, feels angels like leave and they just squirt wine out before they it go. Ju- it just makes the angels into like Santa Claus and it's funny. And <laughs> I don't know, I'm just mentioning it right now because I'm sure somebody out there knows what I'm talking about where. Your grandpa doesn't want to say he saw an angel because, like, why would an angel come see you, right? But, like, maybe there was a – I'm not oh, he's, I'm not saying there's an angel, but there was a little chip of a halo on own the ground. Own it, dude. If you saw an angel, just own it. That was, there was a footprint of a sandal. I don't Listen, know. I just say own it. Like, I, I don't hide that I saw Jesus for a split second. I've told that story before. It was very quick. I, I feel like in this scenario – I was half they, asleep. Uh, like, the feather bit – my question for you is when was the last time you saw it before you were going to show it to a friend? Mm. Because the thing about this story is a lot of it, like most stories that you're told to by adults, it's what you remember of what you're told. And over time it obfuscates. So True. potentially I don't know. Like, I don't, I would love to know when the last time you saw the feather was, cause maybe there just wasn't a feather, but like the story was that there was a feather, you know what I mean? And it was put in this box. You just learned that there was a feather in that box long ago and never looked at it. And just that was yeah. The, so like, but if it was there three years before, and then yeah. you showed it to this friend, that's a totally different story, right? But um, because the vibe, it definitely has sort of um, a story that was told to you by your mother because you were one year old, two years old. So all, all the information was secondhand, and it could be going back to the previous story that your mom had like a crazy trippy ass dream, and she woke up in the middle of the dream, and her body was still adjusting, and so she was seeing different things. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Or it could be that uh, an angel came down and gave her a dream of going to heaven 
and then was like, here. What if it was Boop. aliens? Boop. Look, I'm not sure what it was, but I'm just saying it had a white feather. Okay. Maybe it was a Nordic. Who knows? You know what? Maybe he was fabulous. Maybe he was a Nordic was. with a boa. A feather boa. <laughs> yeah, he was dude. like, hello, everybody. <laughs> I'm here to the- take you to space. All right. This one's less supernatural and more. Oh, God. That's kind of scary. Uh, this is called My Run In with a Bad Guy by Where Is My Stimmy on Reddit. Howdy, y'all. Long time listener, first time caller. Love the show, especially the serial killer episodes because of the deep, non romanticizing dive into their histories. Wanted to share a story of mine from when I was younger. I lived in DC in 2013 outside of Clarendon. And is that how you say there? Clarendon? Clarendon? Clarendon. Yeah. Being young and dumb, my partner at the time and I went stargazing, if you can call it that, in a local park. While we were relaxing, a man snuck up behind us and said, freeze where you are, don't move, this is the police. Whoops. The voice, the voice was pitching itself down, you could tell, and he didn't seem panicked or worried. More like he was trying to go for some sense of authority. My partner and I both stood up and turned to leave. Before we, before we, could, before we could, he called out again. You need to take a few steps back and she needs to take a few steps forward. For context, my uh, partner and I were both facing the same direction and were turning to our right to leave. The voice was coming from what seemed like ahead of us, but it was pitch black and we had no idea where the guy was. I was shitting myself, but no way was I leaving her in the dark. Fuck you, we're leaving and went away. Uh, I kept staring behind us, expecting whoever it was to at least make an appearance, but they never did. We walked a few blocks out of our way, doubled back and got on our phones to call the police. We never saw the guy, though. We, uh, We never doubled back that far. And we never called the police, probably because we were anarchists who didn't think they'd do anything and because it was just weirdly <laughs> horrifying to experience. Uh, later, when we told our friends that uh, later when we told our friends, they brought up that there had, had been a serial rapist attacking a w- women at night the last two weeks and that we very likely had a run in. I never looked Christ. too deeply into the possibility only because who wants to think about that? But I just want to share my weird little story with people who might be able to appreciate it and hope it's a good reminder not to wander around late at night in the dark in a big city. Holy shit. Yeah, dude. Fucking scary. That's like, that. God, I'm glad you got out of there. I'm glad they like didn't chase you or any of that shit. That's uh, it's wild. That reminds me of like when you're watching one of those like haunting groups that like goes mm-hmm. in, like explores like abandoned buildings in towns and stuff. And they're looking for ghosts and stuff. And then all of a sudden, like there's some guy that's like, got a fucking diaper on and he's holding like a jagged piece of wood and he's you know there's like stains on the walls and he's yelling and it's like a real guy that just chases them out of his house yeah and it's just like <laughs> i think we watched one of those once where was a bunch of dudes in china they went to like an abandoned building and there was like there's someone here with us and it was just like a guy but it was like a weird dude yeah, because it's just as mysterious like you don't know what's gonna happen you don't know what the deal is but it's but it's real. a real person yeah. Not, yeah yeah it's like yep. a real person it's so unpredictable really scary yeah very very really scary uh, so glad that nothing happened to you. Yeah, oh my me God. too. That's uh, yeah, it's fucking horrifying. All right, Alex, you're up on the next this one. This one is from user cock in your ass, and it's called my topa. <laughs> Hello, I want to say right that off. Stop. <laughs> First off, <laughs> look at you get around That's the sensors. True. I can't believe K O K I N. You're right. That could be like coquiner, coquinerus, coquinerus, coquinerus. Okay. Koki yeah. Naras. Koki Naras. Yeah, the Star Wars character, Koki Naras. <laughs> <laughs> really, really aggressive Star Koki Wars Naras character. Is, 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 Koki yeah. Naras is one of those bounty hunters that dies really quickly to show how badass the best no, is. Just no, just <laughs> And he's like, <laughs> You like it? <laughs> Give me the cash. <laughs> Thank you so much to today's sponsor, Factor, for sponsoring today's episode. And eating better with Factor's delicious ready-to-eat meals is so freaking easy. I cook sometimes when I need to, but I don't have time to cook every single day. And that's where Factor comes in. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian-approved, and ready to go in literally just two minutes. You'll have over 35 different options to choose from every week, including Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. And also, there are going to be more than 60 add-ons to help you stay fueled up and feeling good all day long. So what are you waiting for? Get started today and get good after your goals, baby. Two-minute meals. Fuel up fast with Factor's restaurant-quality meals that are ready to heat and eat wherever you are. 
We're talking pancakes, we're talking smoothies, and so much more. Discover a wide variety of easy options for the entire day, from breakfast to midday bites, and, and there's no prep and no mess meals, meaning factor meals are ready to heat and eat, so there's no prepping and cooking. Listen, this is stuff that just makes your life so much easier. And all you have to do is sign up and save. We've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved and to be no nutritious and delicious. So if you want to give it a shot, you might as well. Head over to factormeals.com slash chill50 and then use code chill50 to get 50% off. That's code chill50 at factormeals.com slash chill50 to get 50% off. You can do it. Check it out. Eat deliciously, smartly, and more importantly, in under two minutes. This one's called My Tulpa and it's by Cock in Your Ass. Hello. I want to say right off the bat that you guys can absolutely use this on the podcast. You'll have to forgive my username, cock in your ass. I don't really use Reddit for anything meaningful. Also, I'm on mobile, so please forgive any weird formatting. Uh, must be talking about the username, Cokey in your ass. Anyways, a couple months ago or so, I was listening to podcasts. This is, a, this is an episode of characters. <laughs> We've yeah. had three of them pop up. Richard I'm Vagina. Richard Vagina. <laughs> it's just Richard Dreyfus. It's just Richard Dreyfus, but with a different last name. <laughs> I'm Richard Vagina. With round teeth. Anyway, a couple. A couple months ago, I was or so I was listening to the podcast, and in one episode, Alex and Mathis made some offhand, offhand comments about tulpas. And I just so happened to be a tulpa mancer myself. Oh, good. So ever since I've considered making a post about it, love running into a tulpa mancer. Uh, I don't want to make this post too long, though, so I'll try to keep it brief and concise. And if there's enough interest, I can make more posts on the subject. So to sum up uh, my oldest Tulpa's origin, I was watching some Ordinary Gamers deep web series when in one episode that I cannot find at the moment mentioned Tulpa's. Instantly curious, I went down the rabbit hole and eventually decided I would make one. A couple months later, she said her first word, and a year later, she dissipated herself. Just so that we're clear, the best way to describe a Tulpa is a, is a physical, a thought given physical form through focus and intention meditating an imaginary friend into existence yeah uh that's just a very very brief explanation of what they are um a couple months later she said her first word and a year later she dissipated herself but just over a year after that she suddenly came back and i rejoined the community ever since it's only been uphill with a few setbacks that together we have overcome for now i will refer to her as alex <laughs> not because of alex the co-host but because that's the placeholder I used when making her. So I don't know how tulpas work, but this has to be fucked up in some way. <laughs> this uh, is Alex, but like yeah. with a like a sexy body, like a big old titties. That'd be hilarious. Uh, why? What is? Why do you keep sexualizing the both of us? It's branding. I got to stick to the brand. Because he wants somebody to draw a... He wants somebody to draw an extremely no, sexy no. That's not what I was. I don't want that. I don't want that. I'm not that put, he can add I to his put that out there collection. once, and I regret it. I'm good. No, I don't you don't. Like, no, oh you my don't. god, that'd be so. He's like, that'd be so it. crazy if somebody drew like really hot pictures of my coasts and posted them on the sub. But don't, like don't, don't, no, 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 send them to my email at um, illuminatipod at gmail dot com. You don't put them on the Reddit. For now, I will refer to her as Alex, not because Alex the host, but because that's the placeholder I use when making her. Alex has helped me with many of my personal issues, mainly loneliness, but also other issues as well. To give you an idea of what she's like, she's very loving and supportive and very cute as well. She's kind of naive in my opinion, but also very mature. She always sees the best in people and doesn't hate anyone, even if they're not exactly friendly. She almost never experiences any negative emotions and tries to anchor me when I'm being emotional, though I am very stubborn, so this doesn't always work. She's also very forgiving and lighthearted, but she doesn't really have a sense of humor though she was starting to loosen up in that regard. And she almost never swears. She doesn't have anything against it. She just doesn't have the inclination. This is like my girlfriend if I got isekai somewhere. Now, I already feel like this post is starting to get kind of long, but I'm also realizing this isn't sounding as weird as I thought it would, but that's the thing. The craziness of tulpamancy is honestly kind of a misconception. What is it like to have tulpas, you ask? Imagine having a companion by your side at all times who shares every experience with you and can never misunderstand you. Even, the, even th every thought is shared between the two of you, and there are no secrets, but no secrets are needed. It is something amazingly special, and I hope that more people will find the same joy in it that I do. But topomancy is not for everyone. Before making one, you should give it serious consideration. Anyways, that's all I have for now. Thank you, boys, for the opportunity to share this, and thank you, everyone, for reading this. P.S. This is my favorite podcast for the strange, dark, and mysterious. 
and almost the only one I listen to. Almost. Keep up the good work, you guys. Let me just say for the record. I appreciate that. Uh, when you Google Tulpa and you try to like deep dive, they're terrifying. I don't know yeah. what kind of magic, uh, like, <laughs> best friend you have. Every image I see is like a Tibetan demon coming to eat your face. It's, it's, uh, it's one of those things that's like, on the one hand, it's an imaginary friend, right? But on the other hand, it's like an X-Files episode waiting to happen. Like, one day, right, you're going to be there. And I obviously, this one's called Alex, so, you know, grain of salt, So because I'm Alex also. But, like, one day, you're going to be sitting there, and they're, they're going to be like, that's not what I, you know, like, so, like one, it's going to be like uh, Dragon's Plague in, uh, in Dragon's Dogma 2. One day, the Tulpa is going to start diverging and uh, doing things on their own that, that, you know, you don't expect. And the next, you're going to sleep in an inn and, you know, it, you know, you know it's, it's over after that. Who knows? But uh, I don't know, man. Thinking of stuff, like, I think about magic like this, right? Like, magic seems ridiculous. Like when you talk about it in the sense of like wizards and you talk about it in the sense of like magic wands and beams and inscriptions and stuff like that, right? That's the kind of magic I want to be real though. But I mean, I'm just saying that sounds stupid, right? Yeah. That sounds, no, yeah, fantastical, it sounds fantastical, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you think about like that, I could write something that could convince you of something or I can uh, make you cry by writing the right words on a piece of paper, uh, you know, or I can believe in myself and it makes me stronger uh you know or you know all kinds of stuff like that right like that that stuff is all stuff that like a dog probably can't do or that a even a monkey probably can't do because they can't perceive that stuff and i don't know like thoughts are powerful to me thoughts are i agree pretty mad the complex thoughts are pretty crazy to me like i don't know like we talk about like a plant that can communicate with other plants across the dirt and like communicate simple thoughts but i can like make somebody laugh in hungary by talking into a microphone and saying the right thing you know i don't know there's something if you think about it in a certain way a lot of things that we think are simple things that we just do seem kind of magical and tulpas to me like the power of belief the power of thought manifestation the secret all that kind of stuff chaos magic it all feels like all intention. Even if it even even if it doesn't give you the effect of magic like you want it to give you, right? You're not like gonna focus on chaos magic and then one day you're gonna like float out of your house and like everybody will do your bidding. I'm fucking sick as hell though, dude. Right. I'm just saying, like that's not how it's the gonna chosen happen. one. No, yeah. Yeah. There's something there's something trippy about tulpas in the same way there's something triple trippy about doppelgangers. There's something uh unexplainable about it that feels like naturally correct and wrong at the same time dangerous and natural at the same time they they help us fall under that category of like it sounds kind of weird and not in a weird like nonsensical way but i also don't want to do it because there's like a part of me that still thinks it might could like be real and i don't need something with like its own thought process even if it's my own subconscious talking to me it has big like bloody mary vibes you know like something where you're like you're like I, I. Every conventional thought makes me believe that this is not going to go wrong, but like, I don't know. There's something scary about turning the lights off and on. What if I do? Yeah. I, I, I'd make a tulpa. You should uh, try it just so I can have someone to talk to. But like, she's got, she's got to be like, <laughs> no, Crendor <laughs> exists already. I don't need that. No, shit. Yeah, but that's the thing. Like, the thing is, you're trying to create your own no, tulpa, want, like, and for I whatever want, like, reason, when you finally hear the voice of your tulpa, it's just hey. Here go. No, I would. I would <laughs> go insane. I would. Crendor. You would never hear from me again if it was just Crendor, <laughs> a, a Crendor that's never away from you, who knows all your. He's secrets. there for your every moment. No, no privacy. Nothing. No. How about just like a? How about like a cute <laughs> babe called Alex? No, no, no. What if I'm just saying like less Tulpa, more Tifa? You know what I'm saying? We could hey, just. Oh, we you could do a Tifa Tulpa. Yeah. You trying to do a Tifa Tulpa? I'm trying to do a Tifa Tulpa. Can't do a Tifa. Can't do a Tulpa. Tifa Tulpa. Yeah. Tifa that's uh, if uh, Jerry get PS5. <laughs> <laughs> if Jerry get PS5. Thank you so much to today's sponsor, Hero Forge. And what's cool about them, other than the fact that I've been using them for years before they freaking even uh, reached out to us, they don't even like send me any like bullet points or anything. They're like, hey, do you like our stuff? Just talk about it. And uh, yeah, we'll partner up. 
I'm telling you right now, if you're a nerd like I am, you play Dungeons, Dragons, or any tabletop, really, any tabletop RPG, or you like just minis for uh, other kinds of like war games and stuff, you need to head over to fahiraforge.com. And uh, before I even continue, make sure you use code CHILL because that'll get you 5% off all of your physical miniature orders. Head over there and you can literally customize to your heart's content from different bodies and fa fantasy races, heads, positions, arms, weapons, bases, from circular to hexagon. If you play something like GURPS, you can get what you want. And you have an option to get an unpainted, painted, different colors, a variety of different colors, or just one color. Like it's all up to you. And you get to get the exact character that you want for whatever game you're playing. And if you're like me and you end up having a 3D printer, you can actually still go design your miniature over at Hero Forge and then buy the STL file for super cheap. Now the 5% off from our code doesn't work on those but they're like five bucks if you want to get your STL and 3D print it yourself. Otherwise, you can get the 5% off with code chill for the others. So get over there, check it out. I love these guys so much. Hero Forge has been, a, God, I just, it's so cool that I get to have a, I get to do a job where like my nerdy hobbies and my actual job collide. It's really cool. Thank you again to Hero Forge for sponsoring today's episode. And again, head over to heroforge.com and use code chill for that 5% off. Thank you guys so much. On to the show. Uh, the next one's all yours. This is the longest boy. This is like the majority of the episode, but, uh, Jesse, uh, it's all you. <clears throat> My ghost experience from the neon magic. Okay. So I made an account just to post this. Well, congratulations. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Thank you. I'm a 36 year old male from the UK. I drive for a living. So after finding this podcast about two weeks ago, I have listened to 120 plus episodes. Congratulations. Oh, you're honestly, Thank you. honestly, you're my ideal customer. <laughs> he is uh, Honestly, he's you couldn't be better for us just under halfway we call you a whale <laughs> thanks guys for the company on long drives sorry if this is a long one but does cover paranormal stuff and also a night terror i'd love to be explained if possible trigger warning for child death why would you give me the child <laughs> death one i know <laughs> What the hell? Oh, this okay. is well, ridiculous. That wasn't, that wasn't planned. We that have, didn't plan. We have like an that. all caps trigger, trigger warning for child death. So proceed with caution, awesome, please. cool, great child death ahead. Get ready. So Sorry, fun. guys. All right, upcoming mm. trouble ahead. Child death. <laughs> Next five miles. Let me be straight with everyone and say that I lean heavily on facts to make less uh, shit less scary. If I can science my way around something, then I'll do just that. Hey, good. You know what? I'm with you. My mother was Christian-ish. And I was taken to church, but now I'm in the atheist prove it camp. So please understand that everything I say is true. And I have witnessed, uh, witnessed to almost everything except for a few things that y'all read. All right. I'm with you, but I also will say that just cause you're in a prove it camp doesn't mean I'm taking your word for it. <laughs> Doctor who has a paper that he shows people that just says whatever he wants it to say on it. True. Just saying. Don't know why I brought that up just now, but I was, yeah, I was waiting to see where that connected, but that's fine. I mean, I think it might, it might. My mom told me about the weird stuff from when I was younger after some of the later stuff happened. So when my mom was pregnant with me, she was a single mom. Her family were supporting her and had the support of bio father's grandparents. When she went to give birth uh, to me, she got to know this lady next to her in the waiting beds. They got talking and became friends as she was also a single mom. They got talking and helped calm each other down in the rooms while having early contractions. Then I was born. And they stayed in touch. She gave birth to a girl who had health issues and over the following year lost her daughter. My mom and her became close as I also suffer from allergies, eczema, and asthma. So I was also in and out of the hospital in my early years. When she lost her daughter, she gifted all her neutral baby stuff to my mom as neither one of them had a lot of money. Oh, man. Just stuff like soft toys, blankets, bottles, etc. My mom lived in a maisonette at the time, a three-floored house converted into flats on each floor, and lived in the middle with neighbors both sides. Over the next two years, she, li uh, she lived there. Weird stuff started to happen. She would come home after taking me out all day and would have both neighbors complaining about the noise I was making. This obviously started to freak my mom out uh, because she's, she's strong, so carried on. 
Gotcha. Okay. So it freaked her out, but she's, she's tough. She would also find me some of my blankets, uh, pulled up over my head while in my cot. All right. That's potentially dangerous. <laughs> As I got older, I started to walk about the, com- uh, to walk about the complaints from down. As I got older, I started to walk. A, oh, and started, I guess, as I got older and walk started about. to walk about, comma, the complaints yep. from downstairs only escalated. My nanny used to come around and would frequently say she felt a tugging at her skirt and would turn <clears> around <throat> while starting to talk to me, finding no one there. My mom and her new partner were freaked out by this. My mom, having a religious background, went to go see a priest who said that he would come take a look and told her not to say anything about what she thinks it could be. He came into the house and immediately said something was there. My mom at the time, uh, she, my mom said at the time, she went to go get me as he asked to be alone for a bit while he did this, his thing. And when she came back, he just said, it's a little girl. Oh, no. So my mom now freaked out and moved out. Moved out? I mean, look, that's one of the smartest things. We always have these stories where someone's like, what would you no, do I'm stayed for another 10 years. That's the smartest thing you could do is just leave. But it's so expensive to move. I mean, agreed. But if you're, if you're very <sighs> religious and it's a little girl. Yeah. And already, yeah. I mean, look, I'm just going to put the pieces together. But is it the, other, is it the little girl from before? I'm just asking questions. Less, less judgmental, more just like exasperated that you had to move. That's so crazy. On moving day, she had the help of everyone to move out. And when they got to the last room, everything was piled up against the inside of the door. They pushed their way into the single entry room, got everything and left. My mother also threw out everything that was gifted to her as she didn't want anything following us. When she went back to collect post a few months later, both neighbors had sent her handwritten letters that on the day of moving out, that she was a terrible parent for leaving me in the house while she was gone out of the house. And that they had heard me crying for hours until they assumed she came back. So that's all the stuff my mother told me about what happened when I was very little. But it doesn't stop there. When I was in years one and two of school, that's five or six years old, I remember uh, I remember very vividly a teacher asking me to turn off a radiator in assembly because it was too hot. And as I went to press the switch on the wall, it physically switched off without me touching it. I remember seeing it happen and being scared. So did my friend at the time, James. Oh, so did my friend at the time, James, as did a few other kids. This started a whole bullying saga when I was a kid as a weirdo and a freak and honestly made me really believe in superpowers as a child. At about seven, I was over at my grandparents where I used to stay a lot. I had my own room and as we used to go camping a lot, I had a sleeping bag I used, uh, I used to use. I woke up in the middle of the night and I could hear breathing in the room with me. I'd opened my eyes oh, at the time God, no. as was too scared. No! <laughs> but as I came to... A bit more, I remember feeling really hot and realized my covers were over my face. So reaching up and uh, so reaching up and trying to pull them down, I found my sleeping bag was zipped all the way up and closed. Cue a panic attack leading to an asthma attack. I told okay. my mom when I got home and whenever I stayed with them from then on, it always had to be in my grandparents' room at my mom's request. When I was about seven or eight, I remember coming home with my mom, dad, brother, and sister. All siblings were younger by at least five years. And my mom calling me and dad into the bedroom as on their bed was a set of clothes for my mom and set of clothes for my mom and dad laid out on their bed and the same in my room for me. We moved again. Honestly, I'm not going to lie to you. If I came home and I had clothes laid out, I'd be like, Thanks, ghost. Right? Thanks. I don't think I would be like, thanks, ghost. If I lived alone and, and there were clothes left out for me in the morning, I would spend hours trying to figure out how it would I mean, you're right. You're right. I'm in, a, I'm in a paranormal state of mind, but if I walked in and I saw clothes laid out, I'd be like, who the hell was in here? <laughs> yeah, true, true. That would fuck me right up. For years, I'd wake up and hear breathing in the dark room, and I'd even hold my breath to make sure it wasn't me, and it wasn't. I didn't share a room or have any pets. To stop me hearing this, I always slept with a fan on. Yo, don't do that to me. I sleep with a fan on, oh. and now I'm going to be, like, worried. There's someone like, you can't hear me over the fan. <laughs> I don't like that at all. That sounded like Dennis. 
Jumping ahead now to when I was 21, I was seeing a girl but still living at home. We were both in bed, and it was about 3 a.m. I woke up at the sound of a scream. And I don't mean like a yell. I mean like the girl in Jurassic Park when she realized the T-Rex is right there. <laughs> like a true horror yell. Yeah. I immediately woke up worried my girlfriend was hurt and found her as freaked out as I was. Then it sounded like someone took a deep break and maybe breath or just. I think oh they probably God. meant breath. And screamed again. It was coming from my surround sound system I had in my room and it was loud, like full volume loud. This system was not Wi-Fi, not Bluetooth, or anything. It was a Holy base shit. unit with two freestanding speakers connected to two, th- uh, to two thin audio wires that had to clip on and lock in place with the plastic. I know exactly what you're talking about. I had those for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The classic. Yeah. It was also turned off on standby, and my Xbox was turned off completely. My dad came sprinting upstairs and started yelling at us, specifically my girlfriend, for screaming so loud in the middle of the night. Safe to say, I disconne- uh, disconnected that and never plugged it in again. Yeah, I would do the same. Sorry, I'd be like, and this is done. I needed a new system. Fuck the hat. <laughs> this is when my mom told me the stuff when, about when I was younger. Then, at 27, I was living with a different girl, my then fiance, and again, uh, it was in the middle of the night, and we heard a smashing sound from downstairs. I grabbed a bit of wood. I bet it was an awesome stick, by the way. If you had a, just a bit of wood by your bed, I bet it was a dope ass stick. Yeah. He doesn't call it like a bat or anything. It's a bit of wood. Yeah. I grabbed a bit of wood that it looked like a sword. And, uh, I had just near the bed and went down in a t-shirt dick swinging. Yo, Winnie the Pooh style. Hell yeah. Donald Duckin. <laughs> yeah. A <laughs> uh, glass lampshade that had been happily sat as a a set of two in our front room had fallen down and smashed. Checking the shade housing, it hadn't broke or anything. It was still intact. Now, the way most UK light fixtures work is there are like an hourglass, uh, like an hourglass shape. You screw the bottom off, slide the metal shade hanger over, and screw the bottom back on to fix it in place. Okay, yeah. That makes sense. This was all still connected, and there was no fucking way that uh, got over the fixture as I tried for hours to figure out how the hell it would have happened. Later on, with the same partner, we did the ghost chili challenge, uh, and I ate two and she had three. Well, there's your problem right yeah, there. Yeah, you screwed up right there. Should have had ghost chili. Should have had <laughs> scorpion chilies. Much more manageable. Yeah, I mean, plus ghost chili, you're just you're just pissing off the ghosts at that point. Yeah. Like, am I a joke to you? She then went to the pub to meet friends. As I was fine, I sat around. Uh, as she was fine, and I sat around the toilet, hurling my guts up. I messaged her, asking her to bring some, some anti-acids to see if that would help. She came home and said I had to come downstairs to get them. We argued for about 15 minutes. I was getting more and more distraught, begging her to come upstairs. But she just, in a calm tone, in her voice, which sounded hoarse but different, uh, but I assumed it was due to the loud pub environment. Or that she had just smoked a lot while she was out. Then I head to the door and I go, I head to the, then I head, then I head the door go and I uh, heard, (laughs) heard, heard, I heard the door. Then, all right. Then I heard the door go. Thank God. Thank God you can interpret here. I got it. Yeah. I really, I was like, I don't know. Head the door. One of us is actually a writer. One of us actually knows how to figure out something. (laughs) Then I heard the door go and I heard her yell upstairs that she was home. And her best friend said that they had uh, bought supplies for the wounded. I asked her what she was doing, and she didn't understand. Her and her friend said they had literally just gotten in. I argued uh, with both of them that she had just been talking to me about the fact that I had to come downstairs for the last 15 minutes. And that's when I realized her voice was fine. See, doppelganger shit is fucked up, dude. Yeah, I hate it, dude. (laughs) I hate it so much. Now... I think I was hallucinating in pain and that's what I tell people. But when I heard her come in and talk, I noticed the difference in the voice or whatever I was talking to and hers. There had been several other things happen like this. Uh, happen like <sighs> there have been several other things happen like things going missing and turning up exactly where me and my girlfriend had already looked together. Clothes going missing to be found on hangers and wardrobes and just other weird shit, especially electronics. 
My mother, to the, my mother to this day, and all the various partners we have witnessed. I think I'm going. Guys, I think I'm having a stroke. <laughs> the longer you go, the more your brain is like. <laughs> the longer I go, it. the more I'm just like. <laughs> Uh, my mother to this day and all the various partners who have witnessed stuff have all joked about me being haunted, even though I never told them about all the stuff that happened before, as I don't want to think about it and what it could mean. As I'm a huge skeptic, even if I do what Jeff do want Jeff to exist, who doesn't Jeff the mongoose? Who doesn't yeah, want yeah. Jeff to exist? Yeah, seriously. But when it comes to ghosts, even at 36, I'm scared to say they do exist because that's terrifying. But if I say they don't, I'm worried uh, they will prove me wrong out of spite. (laughs) In regards to my night terror dream, let me start off by saying I'm a lucid dreamer. Almost 100% of my dreams I can control, but most of the times I let them play out like a cool nighttime movie. I know I'm dreaming, and if I get bored, I just change to whatever I want. The only time I'm not lucid dreaming is when I get a night terror. The way these form is I'll be having a dream, uh, one I'm controlling or not, and then everything will go dark. But so I can still see the details of items. It'll look almost like thick black oil covering every surface, and the dream will mostly continue on with the dream almost not being aware it's changing. The audio will be taken over by a deafening white noise sound until it's unbearable. During this time, I'll realize what's going on and try to change something, and it won't be, and I won't be able to do that. Then, from all surface, all surfaces, hands start reaching out to grab me, and I start running. I'll never make it or get away, and they always grab me and pull me into a zombie-like pile of grappling hands covering my body and face, pulling me Ooh. into whatever surface till all I see is black, and I can only hear static. Literally Death Stranding. Yep. Uh, Yes. Yes, it is. In the real world, I've been told I curl up into a ball. My breathing sounds like I'm running and I'm sweating. I've had to tell people if, if I do this, do not grab me as the first few people who witnessed it at house parties would always try to wake me up by touching me and I would wake up and just start swinging for them. (laughs) Essentially fighting for my life. As to me, I can't change my dream. It must be real. I've had these for as long as I can remember. My earliest one I can think of was in first school, but I remember thinking that it wasn't the first time. I get them regardless of huh. mental state, stresses for the real for stresses in real life, and can't pin down why they happen. They happen about once or twice every six months or so, and I'm due for another soon, to be honest. So that's my two stories. Feel free to read or whatever. This is the first time I've ever publicly put my paranormal stuff out there as I don't like thinking about it too much as I just can't explain it. It always played on my mind as I just wanted answers, but I know I'll never get them. And yes, my grammar sucks. No comment. I always (laughs) was more a math and physics kid than English. Alex, you're totally right. It's Death Stranding, but also I was thinking uh, Tasha Yar. Oh my God, the black, oh the, the black like yeah, the goo man, devil. asshole in that hole. Yeah, season season one has some. I mean, it's all bad, but there's some specific gems of badness that are so. It's good. It's really the just the staging that sucks. Like the idea of what happens to Tasha Yar is very badass. Like if I was reading a story about it, it would be probably cool. Probably be kind of cathartic, right? Like it'd be kind of like oh yeah, yeah, yeah freaky but because they portray it like an episode of xena warrior princess it comes across kind of bad i i'm super interested in the story about the ghost um because it sounds like if you were just going a little girl on the story like if you were reading a story based on a little girl you'd be like oh it's a little girl from the mom that was next to your mom like that checks yeah. out but i'm also interested in there's clearly like a weird pulled up over your head zipped up over you like that kind of thing where if this was going to be a story, like an actual, weird, like, you know, an like Alex written story? legend. Yeah. Yeah. Like a scary story to tell people. The idea of it being a little girl and thinking we get rid of the little girl stuff and we get rid of, but it really being something far more evil because it's trying to like smother you. I think that's a super interesting way to take that story. Like everyone Some thinks it's a little like girl. And when you're finally demon. like, yeah, when you're finally like, if it's the little girl, then like, let's just be nice to the little girl. But it's like, no, it was never <laughs> little girl. It was always Asmodeus, you know, like that kind of shit. I don't like that at all. 
Also, uh, on the next page, uh, they say, thanks for all the entertainment. Keep up the good work, Neon. So shout out to them. We're going to wrap up with a little bit of a shorter one. And I grabbed this one because it's interesting to me because in a selfish way, I didn't know this exists and I didn't know this was a thing. And it actually something I experienced. I saw this uh, the other day when I was trawling for dreams and it's like not quite a dream thing, but it's really no. interesting. And I'm going to exp- uh, let's go with this. This is called Alice in Wonderland Syndrome. Uh, and this is by posted by. Nimi W peak sui close enough. Just keep swimming. Backwards. Yep. Yep. Just keep swimming. Uh, Hey, oh, long time listener. First time caller, all the brain on drugs slash dream talk from the dream dream invaders apps reminded me of Alice in Wonderland syndrome and my experiences with it. So free, 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 feel free to use this on the pod. If it's deemed worthy, it's been deemed worthy. Don't worry about it. According to the NIH, AIWS, which is Alice in Wonderland Syndrome, is a set of symptoms in which visual perception of body sizes and or external objects are incorrectly perceived. The condition's name is tied to the novel because the doctor who first described it, John Todd, suspected Lewis Carroll experienced these symptoms, thus inspiring the book. What a weird jump to make, but interesting. Honestly, not that weird of a jump to make. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe. The poster goes on to say, I experienced Alice in Wonderland syndrome a lot as a kid, 5 to 16 roughly, and still do as an adult, but at a much lower frequency. It was usually at night, and it is terrifying. It's hard for me to explain my symptoms because mine are more of a physical feeling than a visual distortion. The best way to describe it is that everything, including me, rapidly stretches and contracts, or textures bounce between extremely soft to heavy and spiky. Closing my eyes doesn't work because it's it's a feeling. Sleep paralysis is an unlikely explanation since I can f- move freely while experiencing these symptoms, and they can occur before I'm asleep. I vividly remember one night- Do we mean a feeling as in a notion? Closing your eyes doesn't work because it's like you believe that to be Dude, the case? Is I, this- I'm, let's, Let me finish. It's almost done. Yeah, go ahead, Jesse. Oh, yeah. oh is, it, is this like an inner ear thing? So there's a bunch of different reasons, things that can cause it. I was looking up like actual medical stuff and it can be everything from temporal epilepsy to brain tumors, to meningitis, to other, other things. Like, and there's, and then there, there's like genetically visually you're, you're also wonderlanding in that it's like, you're getting big or too small, like that kind of stuff. Something that scene, something's changed. Yeah. 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 So yeah. But if you close your eyes, it's just the feeling of you stretching. Like I, I look, I definitely been either nauseous or high or drunk or like i've experienced where i don't feel normal so sure, i understand yeah, yeah. the vibe and i can get how even if you close your eyes you're just like no dude this isn't fixing anything it might be making it worse yeah yeah uh let me finish this like it's a little bit left he goes i vividly remember one night losing my shit because my room and i were stretching away from me it felt like reality was splitting apart like somebody making dragon beard candy that's when like oh, you whoa. stretch the candy yeah 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 that sensation still freaks me out. It's not fun or cool, even when I know it's what's occurring. If I were to experience this all the time, I'd probably go insane. Bonus info, Alice in Wonderland syndrome is common in people with migraines, and guess what? I have chronic migraines. Mm. It's also suspected to be hereditary, and lo and behold, some of my family members had mild symptoms of it too. And I read this, and I all of a sudden, so much of my childhood, and even today, I have a fucking word for it. I actually try to describe this to my, to my therapist all the time. As a kid, especially at night, um, I can, I remember like staring at my wall, like you are just like sitting down and getting ready to like rest. And all of a sudden the wall would go into a huge tunnel. It would just like warp. And then Whoa. I'd look at my hands and my hands would start growing huge. And that those visuals slowed and stopped over the years. But the thing that's consistent that I still have is every once in a while, it'll feel like time stops. Like everything stops and it'll, it'll be a noise or something on the TV that'll snap me out of it. And it'll yes. feel like I was gone for minutes, but then I realized I it that. was been maybe a couple of seconds. I've had that. Interesting. Yeah. Um, but like the visual stuff, having somebody also explain exactly what I've seen is crazy. I don't suffer from migraine. I don't suffer from migraines. My brother and my dad do. Um, I don't know if it has anything to do with it, but it's wild because like I can remember it made my heart. The feeling is like almost a feeling of a roller coaster. Like it, your heart drops almost like as the tunnel's going, it's almost feeling of like a free fall. I've had, I've had sensations like this in my life. I wouldn't say anything close to chronic at all, but that's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I remember it happening a lot as a kid and then it just kind of stopped. I just, it just didn't, it just, as I got older, probably in my late teens, it just like the visualizations and all that stuff completely ceased this kind of goes back to what i was saying about magic too like imagine not understanding that this could be something that could just happen with your brain yeah i didn't know what was going on yeah and just kind of assuming that there's some cause for it like external cause like 
Maybe there is. I mean, there, maybe there still is, but just like some sort of immediate external cause, like a demon is like sticking their finger in your butthole and you go like, whoa, like, you know, I don't know. But like, <laughs> I can understand how stuff like this can be interpreted as other things, right? Yeah. I, I must stress if there's a theme today with all of these, it is the music video for Virtual Insanity, Jamiroquai. I'm convinced. <laughs> Every single every single thing we've read is just straight up that music skating, video. Skating on the floor, skating baby. Skating on the floor, moving around, birds coming out of nowhere. <laughs> like weird visuals, I'm telling you. I should you, go watch this. I don't know what this is. So. Oh, dude, you'd love that video. <laughs> <laughs> if you've never seen it before, it's actually just like the original like OK Go video. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I know what you mean by that. It's great. He has a big hat. He has a good, good old Jameer. Huge Kawhi. hat. Massive nice hat. hat. Big old hat. Well. That wraps us up for this week, boys and uh, listeners. Thank you so much for giving us so much character, <laughs> like uh, fodder for just character creation. I love, I love listener stories because they're kind of like always so quirky. Yeah. We get a sense of who's listening, which is pretty cool. I love it. Yeah. We'll revisit listener stories once more this year. Probably we usually do it a couple times a year. Uh, and, uh, but next week, oh, we were going to tease what we're doing next week starting next week alex do you want to let everybody know what we're working on or do you want do you want to save it for next yeah, week yeah yeah yeah. Uh, look i'll say this there's a lot of keywords i've been using okay and this week's keyword for next for next week's episode is hello i hate this i hate this god dude even i am like that's so obscure that's, <laughs> that's, that's but it's so, not knowing what I mean, it is it's that's not still for way us too obscure because we've been reading shit that'd be yeah. like that'd be like if you're like hello. knowing next week's episode the keyword is avocado <laughs> let's prove like, them all what wrong the hell let's prove them all wrong going off just hello tell me what next week's episode is the Chad. keyword is podcast <laughs> it's a podcast guys hello is the clue what do they win if they get it what do they win my respect and Excellent. also i get to say i told you so to you guys mm. that's fair i mean that is pretty powerful telling jesse i told you so is a powerful get ready tool. for all your get ready for all your dreams to come true for a really big deep dive into a subject that you can't believe we haven't covered on the show yeah before. though we have very lightly on minisodes dabbled into it dabbled, dabbled. Into yeah, yeah, it. yeah okay we'll leave it at that uh we're off to go do a minisode over at patreon.com slash illuminati pod thank you for your support everybody just by listening and uh, by jumping over to patreon and supporting us there we're off we'll see you next week goodbye bye, bye. Anyway, me and my wife were sitting outside indulging on our porch one night, enjoying ourselves. I needed to go to the bathroom, so I stepped back inside, and after a few moments, I hear my wife go, Holy shit, get out of here! So I quickly dash back outside, and she's looking up at the sky in awe. I look up too, and there's a perfect line of dozen lights traveling across the sky. <laughs>